So what exactly is VO2 max? Simply put, it's the measure of the maximum amount of oxygen your body can utilize during exercise. Many endurance athletes such as cyclists and runners use VO2 max as a way to measure their fitness levels. And for today's video, I did my own VO2 max test. This video was actually recorded a while back, just several weeks after my debut in the marathon in February where I ran 2 hours and 41 minutes. I was feeling decently fit and thought it would be a cool idea to test my VO2 max, and well, the results were not exactly what I expected, but we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. For now, on with the video. We want it to be somewhat tight, but not too tight. But I'm going to plug you into this, this umbilical. This doesn't release anything, but this is what's actually going to capture the ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide, gotcha. which is what we need to do the math. Okay, let's see where we're at. So what we're going to do is first we're going to start warming up for two whole minutes. Mm -hmm. After that's done, we're going to get started, okay? So you can go ahead and click quick start for me. When we do get started, that's when we are going to start at 5 miles per hour. The test was conducted fully on a treadmill and was as follows. In 2 minute increments, starting at 5 miles an hour, 0% incline, and then increasing to 6 miles an hour at 2% incline, 7 miles at 3.5% incline, 8 miles at 5% incline, and so on and so forth. That's going to be our goal for today. Good. Beautiful. Here we go. All right, you're here for two and a half minutes. So just enjoy the ride. Focus mainly on breathing, nothing else. Good job. Beautiful. Beautiful. Not an easy task, especially because you have that mask on, but you're doing a great job dealing with your two. So a couple things I want to mention during the test. First of all, I wasn't able to put on my hat to keep the hair off my face, which if you've ever had long hair, you know is so annoying and was such a nuisance during the entire test. Second of all, this room was hot. And when I say hot, I mean extremely hot. No air conditioning, no fan of any kind. It was literally like an actual sauna in there. It's like a sauna in here. Let's keep pushing here. We're going to make it a little bit harder in the next 35 seconds. We're going to go into stage three, seven miles per hour at 3.5. Wow, you really regulate. Still kind of low. Not spiking much. Good, there we go. 24.8, keep pushing. see where we're at. Here's this. I'm going to go ahead and get your summary and then we're going to look through it. But let's look a little bit of the raw data together sure. so you see what I'm looking at, okay? So when we started, you are, the respiratory quotient lets us know what we're using for energy expenditure, whether carbohydrates or fat. Mm -hmm. When you started, your RQ was higher than one, which means you're going only strictly through carbohydrates. Could have been your warm up, but then you started to regulate. So if you notice, this is just the warm up. You started to regulate and then we started the exercise with a VO2 of 19.8, but because you're a runner, you kind of go up and back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So you regulate really well. So you notice that we kind of stayed here for a while until we really started hitting those VO2s here, 39, 44. Your VO2 max today was 44, okay? Now you notice when I stopped the test was because you were going down. You're already clinging into the green again. You were going aerobic. I knew that if I kept you, more than likely your VO2 wasn't gonna hit anything 
higher than that. But the next time you do come and test again, or if this was your baseline, we know that we can push you a little bit further out, and I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be better. But it is a hard test, and then we bring on recovery here. But you were at aerobic for quite a bit of time, so, which is obvious. So I'm gonna go ahead and get your So then what we're looking at here today is your measured VO2 max, which was measured at 44.0. Fitness level is good. So here, if you notice the scale, we're gonna be measuring uh, VO2 max through uh, milliliters of O2 for kilograms mm -hmm. and minutes. And we're going to see here that at your age range, 44 is good. And now this good means more than good. This is great. The average person is really difficult to get to this VO2. Even with me and athletes, I've seen only probably three or four hits superior. Usually my athletes are between good and excellent, so that's where we want our athletes to be. Right, so recovery rate, we just watch to make sure that you're recovering appropriately and that mm -hmm. we don't see any weird heart activity. So now, based on that, you get your target heart rate zones, right? So if we wanna be in a fat burning zone, we wanna stay in a range between 112 to 131. The two mid zones are gonna be your endurance zones. And then your peak zone or your cardio zone, that's 18068 to 187, is also specifically if you want to better your VO2. Mm -hmm. um, usually with athletes, we work anything between 15% to 20% of whatever exercise they're doing, let's say jumping rope, to be around 168 consistently. Right. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you. Have a great day. You as well. I don't know, it didn't feel like I was pushing that hard. She stopped it at like eight miles per hour, which is like around seven minute, seven minutes per mile pace. I don't know, something like that. When I used to have the Garmin watch, it would sometimes give you a VO2 max after a hard workout or so, which obviously I know the watch isn't very accurate at all. That would put me in like the 62, 63-ish range. Um, but yeah, apparently 44 is what we have for the VO2 max test here. I wanna know your comments and opinions down below. Do you think that is accurate? Do you think that is not? I don't know. 44 VO2 max, it does feel a bit low to me. So what can we take away from this video? I'm not too sure exactly. What do you think? Was the test accurate, not accurate? Maybe I'm just a bit of an outlier and I'm able to run a 241 marathon with the VO2 max of an untrained normal person. I'm not 100% sure. I am certain of one thing though, and that is this. You shouldn't let these data points or numbers fully dictate how you perform at your given sport, whether it's running or anything else. I know it's easy to get caught up in race predictors, average heart rate, VO2 max, whatever it may be. These things can be good to track over time as benchmarks, but I do not think that by any means they are an end all be all. Only you really know what you are capable of. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, comment down below what you would like to see next on the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, be good humans, do good things, search for happiness. Peace.